Have you ever stopped to consider how we've tamed the very essence of existence? Time. We're on a journey from the simplest shadow clocks of ancient Egypt, through the delicate sand trickling in Greek hourglasses, right up to the impossibly precise atomic clocks of the modern era. But how exactly have our methods of timekeeping evolved over the centuries? Well, let's delve into this captivating tale of time. The Egyptians, among the greatest innovators of the ancient world, are largely credited with developing one of the earliest systems of timekeeping. This system was heavily rooted in their understanding of the cosmos. To measure the passage of time, the Egyptians cleverly harnessed the predictability of the sun's movements. This gave rise to one of the earliest types of timekeeping instruments, the sundial. The ancient Egyptian sundial was a simple yet revolutionary concept. Typically, it consisted of a stick or gnomon stuck in the ground. As the sun moved across the sky, the gnomon's shadow would shift position, providing a basic measure of the passing hours. The dial was divided into 12 parts, symbolizing the 12 hours of daylight. However, as intuitive as this design was, it had its limitations. For starters, it was wholly dependent on the weather. On cloudy or stormy days, the sundial was virtually useless. Moreover, when the sun set, the Egyptians had to resort to other methods of timekeeping. One such method was the use of a water clock, or clepsydra. These ingenious devices measured time based on the regulated flow of liquid in or out of a vessel. They had a consistent flow rate which allowed the Egyptians to mark the passing hours even in the absence of sunlight. But the water clocks were not perfect either. They were highly sensitive to temperature changes and required constant refilling and maintenance. Despite these challenges, the clever and resourceful Egyptians laid the groundwork for the systems of timekeeping that would follow in their wake, setting the stage for an ongoing journey of discovery and innovation that has shaped our understanding of time to this very day. The baton of timekeeping, passed from the ancient Egyptians, next landed in the hands of the Greeks. This sophisticated civilization contributed a significant invention to humanity's quest to measure time, the hourglass. Just like the Egyptians, the Greeks were also deeply fascinated by the cosmos, but their ingenious introduction of the hourglass presented a new and novel approach to the science of timekeeping. The hourglass, or as it was known in ancient Greece, the clepsamia, was a relatively simple device. It consisted of two glass bulbs connected by a narrow neck, with sand trickling down from the upper bulb to the lower one due to gravity. The amount of sand and the size of the neck opening were meticulously calibrated so that the device took a specific time, typically an hour, to empty the top bulb. Unlike sundials, hourglasses had a crucial advantage. They were not dependent on daylight or clear weather, making them more versatile and reliable in various situations. Also, the hourglass was portable, a distinct advantage over its Egyptian predecessor. But the Greeks did more than just introduce the hourglass. They took the concept of timekeeping and applied it to many areas of life. For instance, speeches in the Athenian court were limited by a water clock to ensure that all voices were heard, but that none overpowered the others. The timing of athletic games, the critical task of navigation at sea, and the coordination of military strategies all depended heavily on reliable and precise timekeeping. In these applications, the Greek influence truly shines through. Their commitment to timekeeping systems was not just about measuring hours and minutes, but about infusing time into the societal structure, into the rhythm of daily life and culture. Indeed, the Greeks' use of timekeeping tools like the hourglass played a crucial role in the shaping of Western civilization. However, like the sundial and the water clock, the hourglass too had its limitations, and the pursuit of timekeeping perfection continued, leading humanity to newer innovations. The Romans, much like the empire they built, were keen to leave their mark on every field, and timekeeping was no different. Borrowing knowledge from the Egyptians and the Greeks, the Romans honed it and made it their own. Let's take a closer look at their contribution to timekeeping, particularly their fascination with sundials. The Romans had a practical approach towards technology, and they were captivated by the sundial's blend of simplicity and accuracy. The concept of a sundial or horologium was not new, having been used by the Egyptians, but the Romans were instrumental in improving and popularizing it. They refined the sundial's design, making it more accurate, easier to read, and even ornate in some cases given their penchant for art and beauty. The characteristic Roman sundial typically had an obelisk, casting a shadow on a circular plate marked with lines indicating the hours. 
As the sun moved across the sky, the shadow shifted, giving the Romans a decently accurate measure of time. Yet they didn't just stop at borrowing the sundial from the Greeks. The Romans were in fact the first to introduce the concept of hours of equal length. Until then, an hour's length could vary depending on the season, shorter in winter and longer in summer. But the Romans, with their military precision and fondness for order, normalized the hour's length, a concept we still adhere to today. Moreover, the influence of Roman timekeeping is still evident in our modern calendar. The Romans introduced the Julian calendar in 46 BC, named after Julius Caesar, which closely resembles the Gregorian calendar we use today. This calendar consisted of 365.25 days, divided into 12 months with a leap year every four years. However, like all civilizations before them, the Romans too faced their own limitations. The sundial was effective, but not perfect. It was still reliant on the sun, rendering it useless during cloudy days or at night. Thus, the journey of timekeeping had to move forward onto the next civilization, the next innovation. Fast forward a few centuries, and we find ourselves in the Middle Ages, where the next major innovation in timekeeping took place, the mechanical clock. The mechanical clock represented a considerable leap forward in our ability to track time, and its introduction marked a defining moment in the journey of timekeeping. In the 14th century, Mechanical clocks began to appear in the towers of several large Italian cities. Powered by weights and gears, these public clocks provided a much-needed solution for timekeeping, regardless of the weather or time of day. A limitation of sundials and water clocks. The invention of mechanical clocks brought an entirely new dynamic to societies and economies, creating a level of time awareness that was unprecedented. The first mechanical clocks weren't as accurate as today's atomic clocks, of course. Early mechanical clocks lost several hours a day unless they were regularly adjusted. But the idea that a mechanical device could keep track of time was revolutionary. It meant that time could now be managed, divided and controlled as never before. However, these early mechanical clocks had no faces and indicated the time by striking bells, a far cry from the digital and analog clocks we're used to today. It was only in the 15th century that clocks with dials and an hour hand were introduced, and a century later, the minute hand made its debut. And yet, despite the significant improvements, the mechanical clocks were still not incredibly accurate. They relied on the steady but imperfect swing of a pendulum or the balance wheel's oscillation, which could be affected by various factors like temperature and humidity. That said, it's undeniable that these mechanical timepieces set the stage for the incredibly accurate timekeeping devices we have today. The mechanical clock was not just a technological achievement, it represented a shift in how society functioned. Time was no longer a vague, natural phenomenon, but a specific, measurable entity that dictated everyday life, a theme that continues in the next segment of our journey. So ubiquitous today that we might fail to recognize the real game-changer it was. It was the quartz crystal, a tiny mineral that would fundamentally reshape our relationship with time. But how? Well, in the 20th century, specifically in the 1920s, a surprising discovery was made. When a quartz crystal is exposed to an electric field, it starts to oscillate or vibrate at an incredibly steady rate. This is due to a physical property known as piezoelectricity. Scientists quickly realized the potential this held for timekeeping. Here was a mineral that vibrated at a consistent, predictable frequency when voltage was applied. Sounds like a perfect timekeeper, doesn't it? And it was. The first quartz clock was built in 1927 by Warren Marison and J.W. Horton at Bell Telephone Laboratories. This quartz clock was far more accurate than any mechanical clock, losing only about 30 seconds per year. That's something to wrap your mind around. Then came the wristwatches. Seiko, a Japanese company, launched the first quartz wristwatch in 1969, and the world of horology was changed forever. That computer, smartphone, or digital device you're using to watch this video right now, it also relies on the steady, consistent vibrations of quartz to keep time. The once expensive and bulky quartz clocks have been miniaturized to fit into tiny chips that keep our modern digital world ticking. But it didn't stop there. As we move towards a globalized, interconnected world, the need for a more precise, universal time standard led to another revolution in timekeeping. And that brings us to our next segment. Remember when I said we're going atomic? Well, welcome to the age of atomic clocks. In a world that was increasingly dependent on precise timekeeping for everything from television broadcasting to GPS navigation, 
Quartz simply couldn't cut it anymore. Enter the atomic clock. So, how does an atomic clock work? It all comes down to the oscillations of atoms. You see, atoms oscillate at incredibly steady and specific frequencies. Take the cesium-133 atom, for instance, which oscillates exactly 9,192,631,770 times per second. The first atomic clock, built in 1949 at the US National Bureau of Standards, leveraged this precision. And precision it indeed was. Atomic clocks are the most accurate timekeeping devices known to mankind, with the best ones losing only about a second every 100 million years. In 1967, the International Committee for Weights and Measures redefined a second based on the oscillations of the cesium-133 atom. Thus, we entered an age where time was no longer linked to the movement of celestial bodies, but instead to the behavior of atoms. But where are we going from here? Physicists are already working on the next generation of timekeeping devices like optical clocks, which use light to measure time and are expected to be even more accurate than atomic clocks. And as we continue to push the boundaries of precision, who knows what timekeeping might look like in the future, but here's the thing to remember. All these innovations in timekeeping from the sundial to the atomic clock, they're not just about measuring time. They're about our relationship with time, about how we perceive, divide, and utilize the endless flow of moments. And as we continue to innovate, that relationship only grows more fascinating. So the next time you glance at your wristwatch or your smartphone, spare a thought for the millennia of ingenuity and discovery that have gone into that simple act of telling the time. And as always, thanks for watching.